cartilage. So if it's closer to the density of bone, sometimes physicians will say, you know, this is a fracture of cartilage. But if it's more of a soft tissue cartilage, like a, a meniscus in the knee, uh, we usually refer to it as a tear. Uh, for muscles and tendons, okay, now these are soft tissue fibers, and we all kind of have a general understanding of what muscles are. But when you have a, a tear in muscle or tendon, we're going to refer to that as a strain. Very similar to the word sprain. Okay, just, just one letter difference there with the T. Okay, and then ligaments. Uh, when we refer to damage of the fibers in the ligament, we're going to call it a sprain. So those are our starting words to get us going. Uh, who knows? Does anybody off the top of their head know what a ligament connects? Bone to bone, exactly. Who said? Somebody out there said bone to bone, okay? Ligaments connect bone to bone. What do tendons connect? Bones to muscle, okay? Very good. Okay, so tendons connect muscle and bone, ligaments, bone to bone. Uh, Alright, so within strains and sprains, okay, so People are just going to say, sometimes you say tear a muscle, and everyone will understand what you're talking about. But if you want to sound like a medical healthcare professional, you can use these fancy words. Okay? So you can say strain. And when we look at either one of these two, we're going to look at analyzing and evaluate and kind of grading them on a scale from one to three. So when we talk about a grade one sprain or a strain, we're looking at very, very little damage to the fibers, okay? You'll still have pain, and you'll realize that you're injured, but your recovery time is going to be shorter, more often than not. A grade 2 is maybe anywhere from 30 to 70% of the muscle fibers, or the ligament fibers, or the tendon fibers are torn and damaged. And then when we talk about grade 3, that's a complete tear. So if... Uh, Anyone ever completely torn something? Maybe an ACL. Okay, so ACL tears. Okay, when, if you tore it completely all the way through and it split into two pieces, that would be a grade three uh, sprain of that ACL, which is your anterior cruciate ligament. All right, now let's talk a little bit about phases of rehab. So we have injuries, and, but before we do, what are some of the signs and symptoms? that you feel or see when you have an injury? Swelling. Okay, we get swelling, pain, pain. Tenderness. tenderness, what else? Pain. Okay, stiffness, what, what some of that stiffness do to? Why might we be stiff? Okay, some of it's because of inflammation. View marks on the Area. Say it again. Okay, good. Uh, all right, so let's talk about this first step. So as soon as we have an injury to the body, we have some sort of damage to tissue, whether it's bone, muscle, tendon, or ligament. The body is going to start an inflammatory process. This usually is between the first zero from the time of injury through the first 72 hours. So kind of zero to two or three days. Your body is going to continually inflame. Now why do you think we get bruising and swelling and bleeding to the site of injury? Why does the body send that? Please come again. Say it again. Can you repeat that again? Yeah, why, why does the body have inflammation? at the site of injury? <coughs> Maybe related to blood circulation. Okay, definitely related to blood circulation. What does the blood transport? Oxygen. Okay, oxygen. What else? ATP. <laughs> ATP comes from the... Okay, alright. So let's think a little broader, a little simpler. When you, when you eat food, okay, so we've got nutrients that are going to be transferred through the bloodstream to the body. The, the body has a network of vessels 
We have arteries, which go away from the heart to the rest or the periphery, the outside of the body. And we have veins that bring the blood back to the heart. Okay? So we have a circulation system. When we have damage to maybe it's small, small vessels near the ligaments, okay, those are going to bleed out into the area and we get a little bit, small amounts of internal bleeding. But that's the body's response. Not only does the inflammation sometimes make us stiff, okay, that's the body's natural response. So if I sprain my ankle, okay, and I get swelling there, the body sends inflammation there as a natural way to protect it so that I can't move it as much, so that I can't do further damage to those tissues. Uh, so once we're able to control the inflammation, then we'll move to restore the motion. But to control inflammation, from a clinical side of things, we want to slow down the inflammatory process so that we can get to stage two a little bit quicker. We don't want to completely inhibit the inflammation process because the body needs nutrients to be able to heal itself. But we want to manage the inflammation and the pain before we go to restoring motion. And we can do that with ICE. Uh, we'll look right here. Some of you may have heard of the acronym PRICE, if you can see it over this. Uh, so P is protected, and the body is naturally protecting itself with the inflammation. Uh, you can also use braces, a cast, if, the, if you have a fracture. Okay, then you rest, let the body go through the inflammation process, sending the nutrients there. And then you can ice. Well, what does ice do? Why do we ice? Reduce the swelling. Reduce the swelling, how? Contract the muscles. Contracts the muscles. You're on the right track. Uh, reduce the blood circulation inside. Okay, it's gonna reduce uh, inflammation. Okay, good. So when we put when we put cold on something on a blood vessel that circulates, it's gonna cause it to constrict or contract, which helps us control inflammation. So that's why we do ice. If we want more blood to flow to an area and we want muscles to warm up and have more blood and more circulation, we would apply heat, which is why, you know, when we, when we go through a dynamic warm-up, we want to make sure we're getting our muscles warm and getting more blood flow to those areas to help create elasticity or flexibility in the tissues. Uh, then we go to compression. Compression is going to help get some of that swelling out as we get into the first, you know, 48 to 72 hours. So if your, your ankle is swollen, put an ACE wrap around it or something, a compression elastic wrap that will help push that blood back up toward the heart through the circulatory and lymphatic systems. Uh, and then we elevate. Why do we elevate? Okay, again, we want, we want gravity to be a tool that we can use. We want to put our, if it's my ankle, I want to put my ankle above my heart so that gravity helps pull that swelling back toward the heart so that the heart can recirculate the blood to other areas. Okay, so restoring motion, a lot of that is just, you know, for example, I can, Morgan, you want to be my demo yes, man in front of the board here? Yes, yeah. So, generally, uh, we know that in uh, elevate, we know uh, we have to elevate our, if our ankle is injured, we have to elevate it. So, but generally we do like, uh, do you have to completely rest like this sleeping position? Or can you rest like this and... Is this a good, good posture for elevating our ankle? That is good. So, so, so if you think about gravity, that's only going to take the blood to your head, yeah. which is better than nothing. Okay, that's, so that's better. But if you can, it's most effective to get it all the way back to the heart. So laying all the way back and throwing, throwing your feet up. Maybe some of you have, have tried recovery techniques where you just lay on the ground and you throw your legs up on the wall and let, and let gravity pull some of that fluid out of your that's legs. What going, heavy. That's what I was going to ask. Because some, sometimes in our coaches, you know, we have a big match tomorrow. And uh, for example, let's say we have a big match tomorrow. The coach comes, comes to us and says, just, just lay back and you lay down. When I was a kid, uh, on the 12 or 14, our Korean coaches we used to do that. And we didn't understand that then. Yeah, why do we do that? But we used to feel better, you know? Yeah, that's when you play two games in the same day, yeah. you know, play tournaments. 
After the first game, you do you put the feet up, elevation. Yeah. Yeah. After a long travel or so. Yeah. Yeah. So that that'll just help pull some of those fluids back out. Uh, all right. So let's say we are trying to restore motion in an ankle. Jorge is going to come out in front of the board here and do some demos so you can see. But we'll just look at some motions of the ankle. Okay, I'm not gonna. We're not gonna go through every single joint in the body. That's you know that's this is years of material. But we're gonna try to condense it here into a couple minutes. But for the ankle, you can just pull up into ankle dorsiflexion. Okay, plantar flexion, uh, eversion. Well, that's inversion and then E version. Okay, so four different motions of the ankle and you can combine those. Uh, but it's a, let's say you're on day three, you still have pain with motion. Somebody give me your best guess as to how we can go through these motions pain free. Okay. 